Hello and welcome to Dining with Death. This episode is on our playlist, Dining with the Departed, where we talk about famous or infamous people who have passed. We discuss their life, we discuss what they're famous or infamous for, and we eat their favorite food. I'm Stacy Lee, let's begin. Heath Andrew Ledger was born on April 4th, 1979 in Perth, Australia to Sally Ramshaw, a French teacher, and Kim Ledger, a race car driver and mining engineer. He was named after Heathcliff from Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights. He attended Mary's Mount Primary School in Gooseberry Hill and then Guildford Grammar School. While attending school, he had his first acting experience in a school production of Peter Pan when he was 10 years old. Heath was a fantastic chess player and he competed in Australia's Junior Chess Championship at age 10 as well. He loved Gene Kelly and he took dance lessons and practiced his choreography to be like him. He was such a great choreographer that he led his school's all-male dance team, a team made up of his schoolmates that he had convinced to join, to a nationwide championship, the first it ever held. Heath left school at only 16 years old to pursue acting. He and his best friend moved to Sydney, and he had small parts in 1992's Clowning Around and the TV series Sweat. From 1993 to 1997, Heath was in a television show produced in Perth called Ship to Shore and also had a part in Fox's short-lived fantasy series called Roar. Do you remember Roar? I do. I remember seeing that on Fox and thinking like, who is that kid? He's very cute. <laughs> in 1997, Heath was also in a very popular Australian television show called Home and Away and even starred in an Australian feature film called Black Rock that same year. His real break came in 1999 when he starred in the teen comedy 10 Things I Hate About You alongside Julia Stiles and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. He beat out Ashton Kutcher and Josh Hartnett for the role. That's such a great movie, now I need to watch that again. This is the role where so many people fell in love with Heath Ledger. He plays a newcomer to the area and he meets Julia Stiles' character, Kat, who just can't seem to let her guard down enough to let him get to know her. <laughs> I mean, that's a cute premise, but let's be honest, if a kid like this moves into a new school, he's not gonna have a hard time finding a girlfriend if that's what he's after. This film was very important for Heath Ledger's career. People noticed him. Directors, producers, agents, they noticed him. In 2000, he starred in The Patriot alongside Mel Gibson and then played Billy Bob Thornton's son in Monster's Ball, which is also a fantastic film. And then came the lead roles. Heath Ledger played the starring role in A Knight's Tale in 2001, The Four Feathers in 2002, and The Order in 2003. The Order is one of those films that I'm always shocked more people don't know about. I'm in a couple of horror forums with other horror fans, and there are so many people that have never seen that film. It is a really good movie. The critics didn't like it, but in my book, that often means I'm going to. And if you haven't seen that, I would suggest it. Heath plays what's called a sin eater, which is kind of a mythical creature in a lot of folklore. Anyway, just watch it if you haven't seen it. It might be a little tough to find, but it's worth it. Heath then went on to star in Ned Kelly in 2003, Casanova and the Brothers Grimm in 2005, and then also Lords of Dogtown, which is another of his greatest films. That same year, in 2005, Heath would star in a groundbreaking role in a groundbreaking film. Brokeback Mountain was a film about a very taboo subject, especially back in 2005. I very clearly remember when this film came out. There were a lot of um, late night talk show host jokes about it. Uh, there was a lot of controversy about it. It was an important film and it came out at a good time in history. I think we were kind of ready for it. Well, most of us anyway. This film is the story of two cowboys who fall in love. It's a film that really changed the way many people view homosexuality, and it was a very important and progressive film. Heath received Best Actor of 2005 awards from both the New York Film Critics Circle and the San Francisco Film Critics Circle for this role. 
He was also nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Actor, a SAG Award, a BAFTA Award, and an Oscar for this film. At only 26 years old, Heath Ledger was one of the most celebrated actors of his day. His success, his skyrocket to fame, and the respect he had from his fellow actors, it was all very impressive. Heath Ledger, over 50 times, was nominated for major acting awards, and he won many of the times he was nominated. Heath Ledger never married, but he did have several high-profile romances. He had relationships with Lisa Zane, Heather Graham, and Naomi Watts. In 2004, he began a relationship with actress Michelle Williams after they met on the set of Brokeback Mountain. The two actors had a child together, a daughter they named Matilda Rose, who was born on October 28, 2005 in New York City. Heath and Michelle moved in together in 2005, but they broke up in September of 2007. After this breakup, Heath was rumored to be dating Helena Christensen and then Gemma Ward. Heath Ledger was always surrounded in some degree of controversy. There are reports that he once spat at a member of the press, something he has always denied. And when Brokeback Mountain came out in 2005, there were theaters here in Utah, where I'm from and where I live about 50% of the time, that wouldn't show the film because of the nature of the film, dealing with homosexuality. The people that know me are like, oh no, here we go, here she goes. <laughs> this is a really personal subject for me. As a dancer, I have always had a lot of gay friends and I am mortified at the way we have treated that community through history. So yes, I was aware that there were theaters here in Utah saying they wouldn't show the film. And you know what I have to say to those theaters? Nothing nice. I'll just be good and leave it at that. When Heath Ledger found out about this situation, he said, I don't think the movie is controversial, but I think maybe the Mormons in Utah do. I think it's hilarious and very immature of a society. And I completely agree. His answer was classier than mine probably would have been. So hats off to him. Heath valued his privacy and there were times that the industry was frustrated with him because he didn't love doing press for his films. There are also a lot of rumors and, you know, pretty much verified at this point that he had a heroin addiction. In 2006, he took on the role of a lifetime, the role that many, many actors would give their right arm for. Heath Ledger was selected to play the Joker in the new Batman film, The Dark Knight. Christopher Nolan, the director, actually offered the role of Batman to Heath, but he turned it down. The Joker is a role that many actors have stated causes them a lot of stress because people are very attached to that character and they have very strong opinions on how he should be portrayed. Heath seemed to be under extreme pressure to perform this role to not only the best of his ability, but in a manner that would keep the filmmakers happy, the audience happy, everyone involved happy. It seemed to be really getting to him. And in November of 2007, he told a New York Times reporter that he was having a very difficult time sleeping, that the role he was working on was so dark that it actually affected his personal life. He told this reporter, last week I probably slept an average of two hours a night. I couldn't stop thinking. My body was exhausted and my mind was still going. He went on to tell her that he had taken two Ambien's. He took one and then hours later he was still not asleep, which is incredible. To me, that says a lot about his mental state. I have periods of time where I have insomnia and years ago I was prescribed Ambien and I think I took it maybe two or three nights and I was like, mm -mm. no, uh -uh. it made me feel like a zombie. So I quit taking it. The fact that he took one and it didn't knock him out is astounding. That, that just as someone who has tried it, that says a lot to me. Something was going on with Heath Ledger and it was not good. He couldn't sleep, his health really started to suffer and he seemed to always be under extreme stress. The filming of The Dark Knight ended and Heath went on to some other projects, but something in him had changed and it was not something positive. Heath Ledger was in London working and he contracted some type of severe respiratory illness. 
He was working on the film The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus and he told his co-star Christopher Plummer that he was hardly sleeping at all and that he was taking a lot of sleeping pills. Christopher Plummer later said, we all caught colds because we were shooting outside on horrible damp nights. But Heath's illness went on and I don't think he dealt with it immediately with antibiotics. I think what he did have was the walking pneumonia. On top of that, he was saying all the time, damn it, I can't sleep. And he was taking a lot of pills. Michelle Williams, Ledger's former girlfriend and the mother of his daughter said, for as long as I'd known him, he had bouts with insomnia. He had too much energy. His mind was turning, 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 always turning. Now, Heath also used other substances. He once told a reporter on Entertainment Tonight that he used to smoke five joints a day for 20 years. Now, he was only 28 years old when he died, so that math is a little scary. There were also rumors that the cause of the breakup between he and Michelle Williams was due to his drug use. I feel like this disease takes so many talented artists. Every time I do one of these episodes and it's on someone that we all love and admire, it's just shocking how many times this is a factor, you know, in their illness and in their death. It's really, really tragic. Around three o'clock in the afternoon on January 22nd, 2008, Heath Ledger's housekeeper, Teresa Solomon, and his masseuse, Diana Wallison, went to check on Heath because Diana, the masseuse, had come for a three o'clock appointment with Heath and he never came out of his room. As the two women entered, they found him unconscious in his bed. For some reason, the masseuse called Heath Ledger's good friend, Mary Kate Olson, for help. Mary Kate was in California, so she called a private security company she worked with and they sent an officer to the scene. Now, this obviously kind of says that the people that were closest to him knew there would be illegal substances around and they were kind of trying to protect him probably not understanding how serious the situation was. As the private officer that Mary Kate Olson had called was en route to Heath's loft at 421 Broom Street in Soho, the masseuse called 911 and told them, Mr. Ledger is not breathing. The 911 operator then instructed the women to begin CPR on Heath, which they did. They were not able to revive him. Paramedics and emergency medical services arrived about seven minutes after the call came in to 911. They actually arrived at the same time the private security officer sent by Mary Kate Olson arrived, about 3.33 in the afternoon. The paramedics worked on Heath for about five minutes, but never got any kind of response from him and they were unable to revive him. He was pronounced dead at 3.36 p.m. at just 28 years old. I remember the day that he died. I'm sure a lot of you do too. It was really shocking and really sad. The world was absolutely stunned by Heath Ledger's death. He was the biggest star in a sea of big stars. He was massively popular, very admired. He was simply at the top of the top game in the world. When he died, he was one of the most famous people in the world. Mel Gibson said, he was just taking off and to lose his life at such a young age is a tragic loss. Nicole Kidman called his death a terrible tragedy. Fans gathered outside his home and vigils were held throughout the city. On January 23rd, an autopsy was performed. On February 6, 2008, the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner of New York released the findings and its conclusions. The report concluded that Heath Ledger died, quote, as the result of acute intoxication by the combined effects of oxycodone, hydrocodone, diazepam, temazepam, alprazolam, and doxylamine. It went on to say, we have concluded that the manner of death is accident, resulting from the abuse of prescribed medications. Doctors stated that Heath Ledger had such a toxic mixture of drugs in his system that there was no way he could have survived. Later, in February 2008, a DEA investigation was undertaken looking into the doctors that prescribed the medications that killed Heath Ledger. The investigation found no wrongdoing on the parts of the doctors because apparently some of the medications had come from illegal sources. 
After Heath Ledger died, The Dark Knight was released. Heath's performance was extraordinary. He was such a talented actor, and he really did the role of the Joker justice. He was posthumously nominated for and won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for his portrayal of the Joker. He also won a Golden Globe and numerous international film awards for the same role. Heath Ledger was cremated and a very small private memorial was held for his family and his closest friends. His ashes were interred in a family plot next to his grandparents. We lost an incredible actor and a great human being to accidental overdose and the whole thing is simply a tragedy. The year Heath Ledger died, he was planning to open a restaurant. The plans were well underway when he passed away. After his death, Heath's father stepped in and released funds from Heath's estate to finish the restaurant. On September 17, 2008, the restaurant and bar called Five Leaves opened at 18 Bedford Avenue. Heath's friends and partners, Judd Mongol and Scott Campbell, are the proprietors. Heath met Scott at a tattoo shop where Scott is an artist and he gave Heath a lot of his tattoos. After Heath's death, his friends made the restaurant and bar just the way Heath wanted it. It's an Australia meets America restaurant and bar that serves local and organic fare. As I did research for this episode, I learned that Heath Ledger was a big fan of tea. He was a tea drinker. He very often had a cup of tea in his hand, and he also liked to make tea for people when they would come over to his house. So of course at Five Leaves, they have a great tea menu. The restaurant is still open. It's in Brooklyn, again, at 18 Bedford Avenue, and you can visit any time. I love the look, the vibe. I love everything about this place. It looks very relaxing and very casual, and I plan on making a stop there at some point soon. They have breakfast, brunch, in-betweener, dinner, and drinks. I think Heath Ledger would be very proud of what this place has become. He left a great legacy of film and entertainment, but also of friendships and love for his daughter. Now, as we always do on this playlist, we discuss the favorite foods of the departed. As I already said, Heath Ledger loved tea, and he liked to prepare tea time for his friends when they would visit him. I have a friend who has lived in Australia for many years. She grew up in my hometown. She's younger than I am. I actually went to school with her brother, but I contacted her and I asked her to help me to decide and make sure that I was authentic in preparing a proper Australian tea. Tea time in Australia, apparently, is a little bit different than it is in England. They look at it more as time for a snack. It usually involves a cup of tea, but it doesn't always involve a cup of tea. But my friend Christy told me that when they do have tea, it's usually black tea. She said it can be a lot of things, sandwiches, cheese and crackers, scones and jam. It's just kind of a late morning snack. So stay with me right now. We're going to make a cup of tea as we remember Heath Ledger. Okay, I've got a little tray set up here and we're gonna have a proper tea. This is my little tea kettle that I use every day. And inside is a little cylinder where you put the loose tea. You can see it's well used and well loved. If you want brand new gadgets and all that shiny, perfectly, you know, right out of Sir La Table, you're gonna have to watch Babish. I use my stuff. <laughs> Not saying that he doesn't, but he just always has like the best kitchen stuff. But you drop that down in there. And then I've got my kettle of boiling water. I don't dare reach, let's just do it this way. I'm so excited for that. Now, if you're a real tea drinker, if you're really into tea, I don't know the science behind this. I am not a scientist, so I'm sure that comes as a great shock to you. But if you wrap your teapot in a towel or a tea cozy, the tea just tastes better. <laughs> That's just the way it is. I don't know why. I'm sure somebody does. I'm sure it helps, you know, insulate as the tea steeps and so the water stays a little hotter or something. I'm sure there's some science behind it, but you just wrap your pot in a towel as the tea steeps. <laughs> Set this aside to steep. And my friend said that they just have little snacks for tea in Australia. So here I've got some little cucumber sandwiches and I've got some cheese and crackers. I prefer my tea with real sugar. I actually think it's better for you than a lot of the sweeteners. 
and I like things to be a little sweet. And then I love these honey spoons. Aren't those so cute? The honey is solidified on the end of the spoon and then you just unwrap it, plop in your tea and it dissolves in the hot water. So I always keep some of these at my house as well. Got my little teacup. Let's add a tablespoon of sugar and one of these cute little honey spoons. So I'm gonna drop that down in the cup. Okay, the tea has been steeping for about six minutes. It will get stronger as it sits and steeps. So, you know, if you don't like it strong, you can always add a little more hot water. Let's remove our little tea towel and let's pour this incredible tea. Let's give this a taste. The honey is floral and it's bright and it's rich. It's got really high notes of sweetness, earthiness, but not in a dirt earthy way, in a floral earthy way, if that makes sense, in a bright earthy way. It is so good. A little bite of cucumber sandwich. <laughs> and I've got a little bit of really good Munster cheese and some butter crackers here. It's cheese and crackers, come on. What's better than that? Well, Heath Ledger, if you're out there in the cosmos somewhere, we are remembering you and we're having a cup of tea in your honor. Thank you for joining me today on Dining with Death, Dining with the Departed. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you would like to support me, that's the best way to do it. I try to bring you guys the stuff that you like to see and I sure appreciate you watching. I know there are a lot of ways to spend your time and I appreciate it when you spend it with me. Stay safe and be kind to each other and I'll see you next time on Dining with Death. Bye.